So this beautiful young lady has made a, a beautiful, wonderful creation. Something that, that someone who loves her looks at, and because she poured herself into it, it means so much. You and I look at it and say, well, man, that stuff is awesome looking. But we don't look at it the same way they do, because we don't think of the, about the fact that it was Brooklyn who created that. I think there's something to be said in that this morning for us. Do you understand that, that just like Brooklyn created all of that, do you know that God created everything? Did you know that God is the creator of all? Of everything that we know, God is the creator. And I think a lot of times we go through life and, and we go out each and every day and we think about our, our own little world and the things that are going on in our life, but we don't stop and, and look at the world around us and stop and think that God, God Almighty created all of it. You know that, that God created everything you see? And don't look up here at me because that might make you wonder. <laughs> God didn't make no junk. Y'all know that, right? But God created all. God created everything that we know, not just in, in your little area of the world, but the whole world and the whole universe. God created all of that. If you look in the mirror, you'll see something else that God made. And this morning, I hope that, that you stop and, and you realize that not only did God create all, that includes you. And I hope that we can begin to, to perceive and, and to look at the world around us and at our life and at ourselves and at our family and at strangers and everything as God's creation. God poured himself into it. God loves us and we love God and God made something for us. And I pray that that, that can begin to become our perception of, of God, that God is the creator who made all. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. As you see there, we're going to be looking out of the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 40. We're going to start with verses 21 through 31. Verse 21 says, do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been declared to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretch out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. He it is who reduces rulers to nothing, who makes the judges of the earth meaningless. Scarcely they have been planted, scarcely they have been sown, scarcely they are stock taken root in the earth, but he merely blows on them and they wither. And the storm carries them, away like stubble. To whom then will you liken me that I would be his equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created the stars. The one who leads forth the host, their host by number, he calls them all by name because of the greatness of his might and the strength of his power. Not one of them is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and assert, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and the justice due me escapes the notice of my God. Do you know, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become weary or tired. His understandings are inscrutable. He gives strength to the weary, and to him who lacks might, he increases power. Though youths grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble badly, Yet those who wait upon the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount, upon, mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. In these verses here, we see that Isaiah is, is emphasizing God as creator. The one who created everything. And again, this morning, it's my hopes and, and my prayer that you would begin to, to perceive the, the world around you, that you would look with, with eyes that see that, that God created all of this. And just like Brooklyn's parents look at, at her creation, their heart is, is worn because Brooklyn created and she poured herself into it. I hope that, that you look at the, the world around you, you look at yourself, you look at the people you encounter, and you begin to think, you know what? God made them. God made them in his image. 
And if God made them, I ought to love them. Looking at verse 21, and we begin to, to see this, this creator part. It says, do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been declared to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? You know, since the, the beginning of, of time, man has tried to come up with, with all kinds of, of different ideas of, of how the world was created. Folks, when we stop and, and we look around and, and we see all that God has done, the things that, that God has, has created, we, we understand it has to have been God that, that created all of it. There's no way that this stuff with, in all its grandeur just, just happened. It wasn't some big boom that, that created all the things out there. I, I was thinking about even, even animals. Have you ever just thought about the, the motherly instinct that even, even animals have for their young? That stuff didn't happen out of some explosion. Have you ever looked at, there was a word, I don't think I can say it, but as I was doing a, a, a test for, for work this week, it, it talked about the human heart. And again, I can't say the word, but it's like automaticity. But it, the human heart just has a, a thing that it just, sometimes it will just start back. When a heart can stop, and a heart will sometimes just, just it just wants to keep going. A heart doesn't want to stop. It automatically wants to keep going. And again, there are times when, when doctors have to go in and, and, and do things to, to, to start a heart and stuff. But, but a heart automatically, and, and by virtue of its creation, it has a thing that a heart's desire is to beat. It's because God created it that way. God created everything that we see, everything that, that we encounter. If we look at verse 22 there, it says, it is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. Now this is like 2,200 years. This is years before Christopher Columbus told us that the world was round. What did God say? God said that, God in his word said it's he who sits above the circle of the earth. You see, science tries so hard to, to catch up with God. Science tries so hard to, to maybe even and try to prove the things of, of God to not be true and the things that were, were taught out of God's word, but the more they put into it, the closer they come to, to realizing that, that God was right in the first place and that his word is, is true. Why wouldn't it be? God is the, the creator of, of all. It also says there that, that we're like grasshoppers. We're like grasshoppers. Do you realize how many people there are in the world? How big the, the earth is? You ever gone out in the, the summertime and maybe you sit on your porch and you look out and you, you see the, the grasshoppers running around. Probably don't spend a lot of time studying grasshoppers. They almost seem kind of insignificant to us. But understand this morning, that's, you're not saying that we're like grasshoppers. It's, it's, it's for a comparison pers purpose for the, the multitude they are and how big God is. But understand this morning but that every single person Every being, every human being ever made is significant to God. You are personal to him. And, and to me, that makes God even, even more amazing to, to realize that, you know how many, I, I don't even know what the numbers are of, of how many people have, have ever lived and are alive today, but I'm sure it would be a number that I couldn't say as well. But God knows every one of them. How awesome is our creator. How awesome is God that, that he knows every single person? How big is God that, that God would look down? Uh, imagine a, a, a picture from, from heaven looking down upon earth, from space looking down upon earth. We've all seen pictures like that. Imagine that God knows everything about everything that's there and he made all of it. God's the creator of all. It also says that he stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. God 
God said in the, in the beginning, he said, I'm today I'm going to make a universe, and, and there it is. What a mighty creator we have. You know, I think the, the point in trying to make you look and, and, and view God and, and view your circumstances and your life as something created by God is to, to understand how, how mighty, how powerful God is. If he was able to create all this, then you know what? Those, those problems you're dealing with this week, God can get you through them. Those bills that you're wondering, how in the world am I going to pay that, that person who's sick? Maybe it's your sick, that, that problem at home in your marriage. All this stuff seems so big to you, but guess what? It's not that big to God. It's not more than, than he can handle. But because it's important to you, it's important to him. Now, I'm not much of a astronomer or a studier of astronomy, so I'm, I'm going to read this part to you, and I apologize for that, but I want you to just grasp for just a moment how big the universe is, and I, I got this offline, and I, I, I googled several other places, and the numbers all seem to be somewhat consistent, but it says, uh, we're on planet Earth, and we're close to 93,000 miles from the sun. Imagine that that distance is the thickness of a piece of paper, so 93,000 miles is like that thick. It says, from the earth to the sun, 93 million miles equals a piece of paper. With that in mind, the distance to the nearest star is a stack of paper 71 feet high. 93,000 miles, a piece of paper. Now, a stack 71 feet high to the nearest star. Now, with every single piece of paper representing 93 million hours, miles, the size of our galaxy is represented by a stack of 310 miles high. 310 miles high. That's the distance from Chicago to St. Louis with every single piece of paper in that stack representing 93 million miles. That's just our galaxy. Our galaxy uh, among all kind of galaxies out there. I believe there's probably more than, than they've even been able to see. God created all of that. If God is the creator of, of something so large and so vast, and, and, and then if you want to bring it back down, something that works so well here on earth, then God can take care of us. In Hebrews chapter 1, verses 10 and 11 says, And you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain, and they will become like an old garment. God is God's awesome. God's the creator of all. Understand this morning, if, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have a relationship with the creator of, of something so much bigger that, you know, again, we can't even begin. Th those numbers I just said, I can't wrap my mind around that. But I do stand in awe of how awesome God is. God is the creator, and because he is the creator, we see in verses 23 and 24 there that he is also the provider. If he created it, he's going to provide. It says in verse 23, he it is who reduces rulers to nothing, who makes the judges of the earth meaningless. Scarcely they have been planted, scarcely have they been sown, scarcely their stock taken root in the earth, but he merely blows on them and they wither and the storm carries away like stubble. Man tries so hard to, to prove that, that he is the one who has control. Man tries so hard to be the one that, to come up with these great ideas and to, to take care of everything. We see rulers of, of nations come up with, with ideas and then we see them fail. We see judges make decisions right here in America. We see courts put things out there and God can just come along and just make them meaningless. We see all these things and understand this morning, folks, it's, it's God who is our provider. Now, we might not like some of the things that are, that are happening in our, in our world today and we certainly don't agree with them. 
but God is the provider. Luke 12, 24 says, Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? God's going to take care of you. God's going to take care of, of, of his church. God's going to take care of his children. Again, I'm going to keep talking about these Alabama folks. Even Alabama fans love their children. As a mom and dad, they, they love Brooklyn and they, they work to, to take care of Brooklyn and to provide for her. They would do anything that it takes to provide for her. To make sure she has what she needs. Now, she's not always going to get everything that she wants. And neither are we. But our Heavenly Father loves us. He is our provider. He's going to do everything it takes for us. Everything that we need. His Word tells us that. He is the Creator. So again, if you're encountering something in your life and you wonder, how in the world am, am I going to make it? Remember, God is the Creator. God is a sustainer, excuse me, God is the provider, and lastly, God is the sustainer. God keeps us going. Verse, verse 25, it says, uh, to whom will you liken me that I will be his equal, says the Holy One. You see, God is, God is different from everything else we perceive in the, in the world, and it's God's holiness that sets him apart. It's God's holiness that, that sets him apart from, from mankind. You and I are only holy in God's sight because of what Jesus did on the cross. And it's only through what Jesus did that, that we can achieve that. But, but God is holy in himself. Verse 26 says that God also controls the stars. It says, lift up your eyes on high and see who created the stars, the one who leads forth their host by number. He calls them by name because of his greatness, of his might and strength, of his power. Not one of them is missing and we said how far away these, it's 93,000 miles, 93 million miles to the sun, but we, we said it was a way bigger number than that to, to the stars. Now you may be one who studies the, the Hubble telescope and all the things of astronomy, and maybe you've been to their page and, and you know how many stars they say are out there, but I think it's, it's, it's billions. God maintains all that. He, he hangs the stars in the sky. He causes them to shine so you and I can see them. God created all of that. He sustains them. Not, it says not one of them is missing. Now this morning you say, well, what does that say for me? Well, we said a while ago that God takes care of the birds. The birds don't have to worry about what they're going to eat because God provides. But oh, how much more he must care for you. If God can maintain these billions and billions and billions of stars in the sky. He can keep the sun up there. He can keep the earth rotating. How much more will he sustain you? You see, because he made a big investment in you. Each and every person in here, if you're sitting here this morning thinking I'm talking about somebody else, well, I am, but I'm also talking about you. Do you know that God loved you enough his creation, he loved you enough that he sent his son, Jesus, from heaven to die on the cross for you. To pay the price for your sins. The Bible says that there's no atonement for sins without the shedding of blood. There's no payment of sins. Someone had to, to shed their blood to pay for your sins. And Jesus did that. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. And it was Jesus' death that, that paid the price for you, that sustained you, that made it so that you can have a sustained eternal life. This morning I pray that, that God is speaking to you and revealing himself as, as creator of everything, as provider of everything, and as sustainer. And if he loved you enough to send Jesus to the cross, he loves you enough to sustain you forever. Galatians 2.20 basically says, God loved me and gave himself for me. God loved me and gave himself for me. Paul said that, but you know what? This morning, 
every one of you can say, say that with me, God loved me and gave himself for me. That was kind of weak, y'all. Do it again. I'll go slower. God loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20, God loves you. God gave himself for you. God desires to, to have a close, intimate relationship with you. The Bible teaches that, that God has nothing to do with sin. God created the world. He created the garden. He put Adam and Eve in there, and they stumbled. They sinned. They did what God told them not to do. And because of that sin, they were separated from God. But God said, you know what? This is my creation. I created them. I love them, and I want to have a relationship with them. But you know what? I'm not going to make them have a relationship with them. I want to give them a choice. I, wanna, I want them to choose to have a relationship with me. Now, some of you have heard me, me share it that way before, but as an illustration of why doesn't God just save everybody and, and why doesn't God just make us all his children right away, why does he give us a choice? Why do we have to choose Jesus? Well, because it makes the love that much more special. Imagine everybody in here at some point had a grandma or someone like a grandma. Imagine grandma's having a party. You don't want to go. It's boring. There won't be anything there. You don't even like going to grandma's house. But your parents make you go. You're forced to grandma's house. And grandma finds out that you were made to come because they knew grandma wanted you there, so you had to be there. Well, you know what? God desires for you to be saved. But God wants you there because you choose to be there. And the same thing would be if grandma finds out that, you know what, you had these other opportunities. You had these, these short spurts of fun. You could have gone and done some things with your friends, but instead you chose to go to grandma's house because you love her and you want to spend time with her and you want to have a relationship with her. Oh, what much more special relationship that is when you choose. This morning God says that he loves you and God has offered you a, a choice. God has offered you an, an opportunity to have a relationship with him. And it's already been taken care of. It was taken care of with what, what Jesus did on the cross at Calvary. When we talk about the abundance, the inability to measure, to truly measure the universe in, in all its vast galaxies, you know what, you can't really measure God's love. There's, there's no way to measure what it took. And the Bible says that, that basically our best is as filthy rags to God, but God still loved us. And he made a way for us to have a relationship with him. If you're here this morning and, and you've never said yes to Jesus, understand that it's, it's not about you getting to a certain point. It's not about you... You fixing things, it's about you stopping this certain sin in your life. Understand, I just said, and, and God's word says that, that our best is as filthy rags to God. But the Bible also teaches that we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. That means that when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, when we truly believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, the sin no longer has control over us. That we are a new creation. We begin a, a new life. A life filled with hope and promise and, and joy. A life that can only be experienced through that relationship with Jesus. So I encourage you this morning. Please don't sit through a, another invitation. Another time that God is speaking to your heart. Hanging on to that chair in front of you. Worried about what others might think. When I was eight years old, I walked an aisle in a church like this because I was worried about what my mama and daddy thought. I wanted to follow my brother down the aisle. But praise Jesus, when I was 25 years old, God hadn't given up on me, and I kept, he kept after me. And one night, God, God called me one last time, and he offered me an opportunity for a relationship with him through Jesus Christ. And by his grace... I was saved that night. And you know what, at that point, I didn't really care what anybody else thought. Because one day it's going to come down, it's not going to matter what other people think. It's not going to matter what your spouse thinks, what your mom, dad thinks, what your friends think, or anything else. It's going to matter 
whether or not Jesus is Lord of your life. It's just going to be you and God. You and Jesus. Today, the Creator has made a way for you to experience eternal life, to you to have a peace that passes all understanding. And it's my prayer that you'll say yes to that today. Would you stand and pray with me?